For Thanksgiving in our family, we actually stuff our turkey. So this year for my Thanksgiving turkey video, I'll be doing a classic 12 pound bird with sage stuffing cooked inside and a roasted garlic gravy that will not be half-heartedly passed around the table like my career aspirations often are. First, we start off by prepping the stuffing. In a large skillet over medium heat, melt about six tablespoons of salted butter. I like to use Kerrygold salted butter because the quality really makes a difference in this recipe and the yellow color really adds a nice tint. Add one finely diced onion with a few chopped scallions, two stalks of thinly sliced celery, and a bit of neutral oil so the butter doesn't brown too much. Keep stirring until they've softened and the onions have gone translucent. Next, we'll start off by seasoning the bread. Use one loaf of shredded enriched white bread and add a generous amount of salt and pepper. Then add your seasonings, a tablespoon each of freshly chopped rosemary and thyme, and two tablespoons of sage. Feel free to add more if you feel it needs it. The sage is what gives the stuffing the savory, complex taste and complements the poultry very well. Then add your onions and celery, pouring it over the entirety of the bowl and not just the middle part. Your house will start smelling buttery AF now, and please don't burn yourself because I did a week before filming this and it hurt really bad. Stir with a spoon, realize that this doesn't work, and start mixing it gently with your hands, ensuring you don't break up the pieces of bread too much. Be gentle, but make sure you're getting the herbs and butter oil mix evenly mixed into the stuffing. Sop up some bread in the skillet and add that back to your bowl, and you've got the first part of the stuffing done. Now comes prepping the bird. You should have a flap of skin where the neck is. If you don't, you'll need skewers, but it's typical to have that flappy thing there. Make sure the wings are tucked under the bird and not out to the side so it can lay evenly on the roasting rack. Pick around the bird for any feathers and pull off any plastic rings so you don't choke, hashtag 2020. Then pull the gizzards out, which should be bagged up for you already. Place them in a bowl and set aside, and then pull out this boomerang organ thing, which I think is the neck, but I don't know. So my mom took over for a bit, which is a family f***ing conflict waiting to happen, but she's good with turkey, so I'll let it slide this time. Take the gizzards and boil them in about 4 quarts or a half gallon of boiling water with a peeled and quartered onion and a generous amount of salt, and let simmer while we get to stuffing the actual turkey. I'm just gonna say, you have a lot more room in there than you think. If I had a colonoscopy camera, I'd show you how roomy the inside of a turkey is because this video doesn't do it any justice. Stuff it bit by bit, making sure that you don't press it all together. The last thing you want is one giant ball of stuffing because although it looks kinda cool when it avalanches out of there, it won't cook evenly and you'll have a dry bread in the middle and that's kinda bad. Oh look, mother's helping me. How nice. It's really a blast and a half being a mid-twenty-something guy living in quarantine with your family, but we're COVID-free so far. This year's not over yet, though. So you want to close the hiney hole by placing the skin over it and holding it shut with skewers, which you should soak in water beforehand if they're made of wood. Turkey skin is also a lot tougher than chicken skin, so you may need an extra set of hands. Thank you again, mother. This may take a bit longer than you think, but there's really nothing you can do about it, so you're just going to have to deal with it. Then stuff the neck hole. Again, way more room there than you think. Use it to your advantage. Now this time the stuffing might fall back out once you've put it in. That's okay. Just put it back in there and feel free to pack it in a bit more tightly than the main cavity. Put that neck flappy part skin thing inside the cavity on the top end. No skewers this time, thank the lord. I was genuinely sweating puncturing that freaking bird. Okay, so now you just have to add a generous portion of oil and massage the turkey. Then add a good amount of salt, pepper, and paprika for color, and rub that in every nook and cranny, covering all the skin. Take a roasting tray that's been fitted with a rack, remove the rack, and add some oil and a bunch of garlic to the bottom of the tray. You can also leave the skin on the garlic, it won't burn in the oven despite its papery texture. Put the rack back on the tray and put the turkey on that and roast at 325 Fahrenheit or 165 degrees Celsius for about 3-3.5 three to three and a half hours. When you remove it from the oven it should be fairly browned and the internal temp should read 165 Fahrenheit. Use the leg to read the temp. Then make the gravy. That is not milk. That is a water flour slurry with about equal parts of water and flour, obviously. Maybe a bit more flour. Make sure you pour it in all around the roasting pan and whisk fairly rigorously so that no clumps stick to the pan. That's what thickens the gravy. As you can see, it's a bit too thin when it drips off my spatula, so add a bit more of that slurry until the gravy reduces and thickens to the point that it coats the spatula or spoon and then pour it into a bowl with a sieve placed on top. Press the spatula against the sieve so that all the gravy gets into the bowl. Now we de-stuff the bird, which is pretty simple. The problem here is that it's going to be hot, so you'll need to proceed gingerly. Love that word. Use a large spoon and scoop it out of there bit by bit and place it into a casserole dish. You can eat some too. That's the reward you get for cooking all the time for your parents and not paying rent. Now we carve the bird. This is where things got a bit tricky. 
Start with the leg and cut through the skin and around the wing and joints to get a clean removal. You can remove the wing too, it does kind of get in the way, especially the way it's tucked under the bird. Going back to the leg, cut through the joint connecting the big drumstick and the thigh. This is the hottest and most tender part of the bird, and you can't really use a fork here to help you out because of the complex anatomy, so it's going to be kind of challenging, but it's Thanksgiving and everyone's drunk, so it's fine. You'll also find more bits of stuffing lodged in the cavity, which is always a nice surprise. Then you'll go back to the other side of the bird and do what you did on the first side, removing the wing, leg, and thigh. My dad was shaking his head at me from behind then cut all the way down to remove the leg and thigh and start slicing the breast off vertically about an inch thick in the slices. And there you go, that's my first turkey video. I'll most likely make a new one every year around this time of year, so if you have any suggestions on how to make a really good turkey with confit or bougie whatever, just comment below. See you next time. In the middle, pull it with your fingers. Like, I don't know what you mean. Use your right hand to pull that meat off the bone and gosh, never mind then. Why can't I just cut it off? All right, okay, cut it off. Cut it off. You need to sharpen that knife. That's horrible. Well, I gave him another knife. All right. Body, because yes. that's where the joint Don't, is. No, not out. In. In. Towards the body. Josh, turn your knife it's, this way. Yeah, there you go. The joint is towards the body, not on the outside. It's really hot. I'm really focused and I'm just distracted.